Hi there, I'm Josh Finn from j and Aerospace. This is the 2024-2025 Tornado Helicopter Kit for Science Olympiad Helicopters, uh, both Divisions B and C, because the rules are the same for both this year. And so we're going to give you a demo of this aircraft and also show you how to operate it correctly. So this is our expert level kit. Um, it is designed for students who've already built uh, the Twister and so therefore have some basic build experience and some experience operating a helicopter. Once you've got that experience, then you can move on to this aircraft. Um, helicopters are by definition very unforgiving of build mistakes. So if you haven't built a helicopter before, get a twister, build that out and get comfortable with it before you pursue this aircraft. This aircraft does fly for considerably longer, about twice as long for the average student. Um, but it is much more difficult to build. Now this is the version 2.0 uh, Tornado. So we have the shortened um, rotor spars and those reduce the drag on the blades, uh, improve the simplicity of building the helicopter and, and so on. Uh, but this does require accurate building of the blades. The kit includes jigs for setting this blade pitch, the uh, pitch relative to the aircraft's rotational axis on both the top and the bottom, and that is absolutely critical to obtaining a successful helicopter. Without that, your helicopter simply will not fly. So we're going to show you how to operate it and how it flies, and uh, so we'll come back in a minute. All right, so I'm going to show you how to set up a rubber motor for this uh, aircraft. So starting loop length for a typical user is going to be about this long, so the distance from the hook to this hook with just a little bit of slack. This one is a longer rubber motor. That's because I've dialed into the needs of this specific aircraft and its RPMs in flight and, and so on to optimize to land with just a few turns at the end of the flight. Now we have O-rings on this, on this rubber motor, as you can see. Those allow us to provide proper transfer of the rubber motor on and off of the helicopter, on and off of the winding stand. We have a very tight, neat knot. This is very important. I see a lot of students with these big, huge knots. You want a very small knot and you want it positioned close to this O-ring up at the top. So if you have it um, in the middle, it'll beat against the motor stick and it basically cut, effectively cuts your rubber motor into two sections, one that unwinds and one that doesn't. We use silicon rubber lubricant on these rubber motors. Uh, this is the silicon oil that we sell. So it, it's called silicon oil. There is no oil in it. Uh, it is um, pure silicon liquid. And this is manufactured to our specifications by a, a, a third party manufacturer. And so before every flight, we're gonna lubricate this rubber. Now, I'm going to show you the process of winding on a um, competition winding rig with a torque meter and a winder. And of course, we have a mechanical torque meter available that works very well. This is my electronic one. These are available from Indoor FF Supply. So if you can afford one of these for your team, this is a better piece of equipment, but it's, it's considerably more expensive. This is an Orwee uh, Metal Gear Winder, and this is what I use personally in competition. Uh, but the plastic winders work just fine uh, if you learn the, the art of using them and counting turns. Uh, but this is going to allow me to show you digitally on video what, uh, what numbers we're getting. If you don't have access to all of that, don't have a torque meter on hand, need to fly immediately. As long as you have a hand crank winder and like a binder clip to clip to a table and stick a, a paper clip through it, um, that can provide you a hook to wind the aircraft on. So we're going to fire up our torque meter, we'll fire up a turns counter on this uh, winder. I will say never wind the rubber motor on the actual plane. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a great point. The, 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 entire, the reason we're mentioning the binder clip is the last thing you want to be doing is winding on your helicopter because if the rubber rotor sma snaps, your hold, you would have to be holding so close to this ro rotor hub that just you flinching could punch your finger through one of the blades. 
the rubber motor flying back can hit the blades and take them out and then you you have major repairs to do and more than likely to get back to full performance you would have to just build an, an entirely new helicopter so do not ever wind on the helicopter all right uh, if you'll come around this way just so they can see so we're at 0 0.123 something like that uh, inch ounces basically zeroed out um, that's just residual stresses that we're seeing there so this is the relaxed length of the rubber so we're gonna we're gonna come out here um, just because I don't have the greatest traction here, I'm only going to go out to three times the relaxed length. I should be out to about here. But we'll get pretty good turns count here. And so this rubber motor should take a uh, pretty good turns count. So we're, we're looking to get to about 60% of our target turns out here. So if I was aiming to get about 900 turns, this would be it. This rubber motor is broken in, so I should be able to get a little more. And uh, that rubber motor is broken in a little too good, so uh, we'll make a new one. All right, so we've got a fresh loop of rubber. You should always have spare motors with you. The, this stuff is disposable. If you're not breaking a motor like every third time you're winding up, um, for to fly, you're not winding hard enough. Break rubber motors. If you're not breaking rubber motors, you will be second place to those who do. All right, so we've got this one freshly looped up. And we'll, all right, so again, we're stretched out about three times relaxed length. Um, just to, get to respect the fact that this box is. Uh, fairly light and I don't want to tip it over. It's not designed for this particular purpose, but it's a nice winding platform. All right, so I started coming in at about uh, 550 turns, so that'll put me, um, on this particular rubber motor, I'll probably max out at about uh, 850. We're over one inch ounce here, so very, very high torque. And as predicted, 850 at 1.33. We could go higher, um, we could massage more in, but this will be good enough. And then I'm gonna back off to about um, 0.8 for actual use in loading onto the model. All right, so now I'm gonna show you the loading process. Always load from this hook end first. This always simplifies things because if I'm trying to load from here, this is spinning around. If I load from here, I have it constrained. So now what I can do is I can slide this O-ring off this requires you to squeeze this very hard. It takes a lot of strength, so, and so it's going to require practice. Now I can load that motor on, and I can load this end up here. So notice the order I've done that. For unloading, I unload the top end first. So I basically do the operation in reverse. Top end first, back end down here. So I'm going to take this washer, washer O-ring, and I'm going to load it onto my hook. Now I can load onto my top hook, and here we go, we're fully wound and ready to go. To launch this, you're going to let go of this bottom rotor first, and then the fuselage. So I let go, and now I can let go of the rest. These bounce around a lot on the ceiling, and that's fine. That does not hurt performance. What does hurt performance is the helicopter falling on its side on the final descent. So you'll want to watch for that part. And the air conditioning is on, that'll be fun.
caught in the air conditioning. Oh well. It was going to be a nice flight. Oh, there we go. And back in the AC. actually fly these in your living room. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people are aware of that, but let's see if we can do this here. They do shake around a fair bit. And at high torque, they can get really, really ornery. So um, that one has some, some tuning issues, uh, just as, as you've seen from else, uh, elsewhere, normally they fly a little better than that. But my, my point is you can fly these in a very small space. And um, so that's the, the thing to remember is you can do all of your testing in a living room uh, before you go to an actual flying site to fly these competitively. So Hope asked me to go over some issues uh, as far as things we've seen in terms of construction errors and the like on these um, so that we can kind of cut down on some of the, the email traffic. So there are a couple of things you want to look at on, on your helicopter. One is, uh, as you're building these, if you notice, I don't have any excess glue on any of these joints. I have just enough glue to secure the part to the flying surface. My covering is trimmed nice and tight close to the edges on everything. Same up here. Now it's very important that you build these rotors to the templates. So if you notice on the top templates, we're trailing back. And that's for, as viewed from above, we're doing an anti-cyclonic um, or, or counterclockwise, sorry, a cyclonic or anti-clockwise um, counterclockwise counter rotation on top, we're doing a clockwise rotation on the bottom. This is a standard rotation arrangement, but the bottom line is that means on the top, your rotors should trail in this direction. Your bottom rotors should trail in this direction. So if you notice, I have more blade area behind than in front of the spark. And then if we look at these angles, these angles are critical. So I see people not, uh, I get emails from people who have not glued this stuff securely. I've got some loosening up here. This is, so if you can see this is able to wiggle a little bit. That's something that I need to address on mine because I've got wobble there and that will impact your flight performance. So you want to eliminate all of that. Your glue joints need to be secure. So you glue all of these parts and then you coat the CA into that thread wrapping after you apply it, after you've gone ahead and glued the joints and, and so on. These joints here to secure this rotor onto the spar must be glued while the rotors are in the jigs so that you secure this 20 degree angle uh, that is your pitch angle top and bottom. That is absolutely critical to achieve proper function on the helicopter. Um, so maintaining a clean construction on all of this is, is very important. These, again, these are very unforgiving of those types of mistakes. If you notice, my vein is able to rotate freely here. So I have just enough slop that it can play up and down a little bit. 
um, so that there's minimal friction on this. So I can just, if as I rotate this around through the air, you can see how it spins to face into the prevailing wind. That's very important on that uh, on that component. I have no glue in my bearing here. Um, if I start to see any white powder appear on this glass bead here, because of that, uh, if there's any grinding on that bearing, I need to apply a little bit of silicon oil to that joint to prevent that. So those are those are the main things I can think of at the moment that, that we're receiving questions about. So the bottom line is follow the manual exactly. At present, we do not have a build video for this. That If, if one shows up, it will be mentioned in, in the manuals. Um, but go by the build instructions linked, uh, commented in the documentation for your kit. Uh, I bring that up because due to supply chain issues, we've had uh, some where we've had to put in a red plastic bearing here instead. And for those, um, there's a specific set of instructions for that. You can kind of extrapolate back and forth because it's only for this assembly down here and it's only the bearing part of the assembly, but pay attention to that. Um, also of note, uh, because I receive a lot of questions about it, we remove the gray Icara bearing that's normally here and we replace it with this wooden, uh, wooden hub here on these. Right, so that is the flying process for the Tornado. Things, again, just to reiterate, make sure your blades are straight, that they are at the correct angles. These angles are absolutely critical. They have to be in opposition to these. The jigs that are supplied in the kit will allow you to do that, but you have to assemble them per the instructions. So helicopters are very unforgiving of those mistakes. Now, the last thing is these do have to fit into a box, so let me show you. This is the box that we sell for the AMC Science Olympia. You can see the airplane fits in the box. You can close it up in. One other thing I will mention is storing the helicopter like this can damage it because you can get the blades caught and then they'll bend. Um, and I'm actually having a problem with that with improper storage on this one. So what you ideally want to do is remove your bottom rotor because they are removable. And then you can set this machine in here in such a way that it's balanced on other things or, or what have you so it won't get damaged as easily. That also lets you store more helicopters in your box. So with that, check out the 2024-25 uh, Tornado Helicopter from JNH Aerospace at jhaerospace.com. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.